you have known me quite a while you know let me share something about myself with you i haven't seen my son in about 20 years now 20 years i haven't seen my daughter in about 15 16 years they don't write to me they don't talk to me if i send them a message they don't respond you know i try to even wish my son for his is wedding and he was replied to me saying don't message me i don't know you i don't know who you are and you know what it may be the will of god that they would never do it and my life will be over before they even hear them say hello to me you see i haven't seen my grandchildren will i ever be able to see them probably not you know he did not even have me over for his wedding i don't know you you know but as much as you have known me have you seen any regrets in me about it am i devastated by it you're a strong man and you have good faith it's not faith i know the will of god is some day going to some day going to maybe not in my lifetime but some day going to do you know a massive incredible turnaround and my children my grandchildren maybe my great grandchildren will come to realize who the old man was see and we need to have that faith in him you know it may not be what i like to see i would love to see my daughter i would love to see my son you know i would love to play with my grandchildren as you did you know is that going to happen probably not and I'm sure you're praying for it. Whether it to happen or not, no, I pray for the will of God. Okay. Well, that's an even better one, I guess. You know. Yeah, if it doesn't happen here, it can happen uh, somewhere. Yeah. Beyond. And uh, I'm grateful that God is taking care of them. My children haven't gone astray. You know, I mean them having not known their father for so many years, many things could have gone wrong in their life. you know so i'm grateful for the good things that are happening to them very grateful and uh, so i have the joy of gratefulness even in their absence let's go and look at it see that is how understanding the love of god helps you do not the will of god the love of god because the love of god will always prevail it's always for his glory and we are not going to be spared even of our own glory well that's where i want to be one day yeah so <laughs> where is that <laughs> yeah well i feel like with the love of god there is always forgiveness forgiveness is always there i mean don't ever think god is unforgiving i mean that is really a horrible way of looking at god really yes i mean it's 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 very naive is that and... responsible for any thing that we feel is punishing <laughs> you know there is a story about saint faustina i'll share with you okay Saint Faustina was. You know who Saint Faustina is. No. You don't know. I don't think so. Uh, she don't, she don't. is the Carmelite nun who uh, who was a you know the saint in in the Divine Mercy prayer culture. Okay. Okay. Um, and she was a Carmelite mystic, and she encounters God all the time. You know, so 
And here she was, and she was having very regular encounters with Jesus. And the community knew about it. But obviously, it is their responsibility to tell their bishop that so-and-so is having apparitions, and which they did. So as the bishop, you know, he needs to bring it under the administrative control. Mm -hmm. You know, he needs to know whether it is true, whether it is valid, whether it is needs to be validated, scientifically experimented, you know, and all of those things so he can vouch for things like that. You know, that's their ordered way of administrative handling it of appellations like right that. Yeah. So here he is. He calls Sister Faustina and, and asks her, I hear you that you see Jesus all the time. And uh, she says, yes, I do. Okay. So he gives her homework. <laughs> Next time you see Jesus, ask him, the last confession I sinned before I was ordained as a bishop. The sin I confessed to before I was ordained as a bishop. And uh, so she says, okay, and everybody goes on their own way. A couple of weeks later, he sees her again and she calls the sister Faustina, come over. Did you see Jesus? She says, yes. Did you ask him what I asked you to do? Ask him. And, and uh, she said, yes, I asked him. What did he say? You know what the answer was? Jesus said he doesn't remember. Thank okay. you, Jesus. <laughs> you see what I mean? You're forgiven and it's gone. It's not even forgiven. You know, for Jesus it's not relevant. Jesus is looking for much more important things about you. And that is to glorify God. You know, so do you seriously think, you know, glorifying God by you, through you, is less relevant than the sins you committed? Or more relevant than the sins you committed? What is it? You know, it's, it's just not relevant. Yeah, there's a bigger picture out there. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Neither. You know, so if you need to be forgiven, all right, you know, start with praying for the people who have been affected by your sins. Pray for them relentlessly. Even if the people have rested, I mean, dead and gone, pray for their souls. Okay? You know, if you can meet with them and ask for their forgiveness, ask for their forgiveness. You know, but regardless, pray for them all the time. Pray for them all the time. Okay? Uh, pray for their peace. Pray for their happiness. Even if they are dead and gone, pray for their peace and happiness. Pray for their eternalness. Pray for their families. You know, keep praying. Keep praying. The more sins you have committed, pray for those who have gotten affected by it. Okay? Ask for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. See? I mean, look, I've been living in this country for more than 40 years now. Okay, 43, 44 years. A lot of the people who were affected by my sins, I'm not even touch with them. I don't even know if they are dead or alive. But you pray for them. I have to. No, and you I don't have to, but you will. Yeah. And I think about them all the time. I pray for them all the time. See, actually, my... Own forgiveness depends on it. My own peace depends on it. So should ours. Yeah. You know, so that is the important thing. If you can reach out to them, reach out to them. See, one thing that happened, you know, in my way, in my spiritual growth, 
during the time I started writing the book. Even before, it started actually about five years before I started writing the book. God brought the people one by one who actually offended me by their sins, hurt me so bad by their sins against me. You know, whether it is betrayal, whether it is a sexual uh, sin, it really doesn't matter what it was. But they, he brought them back to me one after the other. Was I angry when I saw them? Yes. Did I have, you know, I mean, as I was struggling to come up with negative reactions, did I? Yes. But there was something in me that made me look beyond them because I had already started praying for them in my way of asking for forgiveness. And when they came face to face with me, although I did not know how to deal with them, God came, he guided me to you know, deal with that. I was very hospitable to them. I was very nice to them, you know, and, uh, and uh, yeah, reflected God first. It's, it's, it's not, it is not that I was doing what I was doing. I was going with the flow and I was doing whatever I was doing. But at the end of it, every one of them said to me, oh my God, I don't realize how loving you are. Every one of them. Every one of them did that. You know, one of them I even had an altercation, you know, with him and and, uh, and this was in my early 20s. I beat him up so bad. I mean, his ears were split open and was hanging. Okay, that's how hard I punched him. You know, so imagine the rest of his face. You know, Did he offend me? Yes. You know, did, did, I, did I take it upon myself to do something about it? Yes. Did he commit sin? Yes. Did I commit sin? Yes. All of us committed sins. But you know, the mercy of God, he ended up dying on my lap. That was about 50 years later. And I prayed for him, you know, I'm the one who actually surrendered him into the hands of God. You know, and my last prayer was, you know what it is? God, I know you out there. I know you are the king. Remember when you come into your kingdom, this man. Remember him when you come into your kingdom. When I said that prayer, he passed away. And you know how he passed away? I mean, here I was praying and my cousin was, was also holding him at the same time, you know. And my cousin was saying to him, you know, I, he told him a joke. You know, can I tell you a joke? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, he told him a joke. And so when he finished telling him the joke and here I'm still praying, and he was telling him a joke. I did not even listen to, uh, you know, the joke. Uh, then, you know, I mean, in his faint smile, he smiled. And I said, I know that's not how you laugh. You laugh the way you laugh. You know, you normally laugh. And you know what? He actually, ha! <laughs> and his life went. Wow. 
What a way to go. What a way wow. to go. What a way to go. You know, so that's when I knew God was real. Jesus was real. His mercy is real. His forgiveness is real. Everything was so real about him. Everything was so real about him. You know, so look for the will of God. Look for the love of God beyond the will of God. You know, yeah, you know what has happened in your life. You know, and is God will for that to happen? Yes, he has a role to play in it. Well, you have been blessed. Many of us have been blessed and some of us not realizing it. All of us are blessed. All of us are blessed. And what you said is right. All of us haven't realized that. All of us are blessed. You know, all of us are still alive because there is more chance for us to get blessed. You know, there is more coming our way. And that is what we are. That is where we are. You know, so go beyond, go beyond the will of God and don't over everything. God does not have his will entailing even the sins you committed. You know, a lot of Christians would just, you will not agree with me when I say this. You know, but remember, God has a role to play in the betrayal of Judas Cariot. Okay, the will of God entailed his betrayal. You know, so don't ever think the will of God is not there. Everything that happened to Job, the will of God was there. Everything that happened to him. But the whole book of Job is for us to look at the love of God beyond the will of God. That's what the whole book of Jobs teaches us, 